In today's video, I'm showing you how I use the Grow Vertical Moss Pole to make many plants out of just one vine. Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you can tell, the background is different. Um, it's the first time filming at my new apartment. So I thought why not try and film in the outdoor courtyard because I'm gonna do some reporting today. It's gonna to get messy and I'd love to be able to take advantage of the outdoors so I don't have to make a mess inside. But we'll see how we go with the lighting, with the background sound. I don't know if you can hear the road. Um, but I put this little wind blocker thing on, what you, I think it's called Dead Cat. Um, so I've, I've, I'm looking very professional, I'm feeling very professional today. Alrighty, so today we're looking at this philodendron no ID. It has no ID. It was a cutting that was sent to me or I ordered a cutting and then the seller put a second little cutting as a, as a freebie into the same packet. So, um, and the seller told me that they don't 100% know the ID. It is some sort of hybrid. So we're just gonna go with philodendron, no ID. But honestly guys, you know how I feel about names. Um, they're really irrelevant to me. I'm more after the way that the plants look. And when I first got it, it was kind of like looking like this. Um, I popped it on a moss pole and then eventually these leaves started getting some nice lobes. Now it reached the top of its moss pole, oh, already, I think already a couple of months ago, to be honest. Um, and what I did is I just chopped the plant in between every single node and that's it. I didn't do anything else. I kept it on a moss pole. I kept watering the moss pole and pretty every single shoot and I'll come a bit closer so you can see that. Every single node has produced a new shoot. So, and some of them have already produced new leaves. So there's like, oh, I mean, the we've got obviously we've got the big growth point at the top but then we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve i think 12 new growth points in here at the moment so yeah i basically turned well it, it was two vines on here to be fair so it was two vines but i cut them all and now i've got 12 vines in here technically i could just leave it as it is but there are lots of roots coming out the top of this moss pile i don't know if you can see this um, there's heaps of roots coming out the top so i know that this is in desperate need for a little bit more room i'm planning on popping it back on a new grow vertical moss pile and probably just put three or four of them on here and the rest i'll pot up separately and i might want to see what this plant looks like trailing but before we get started, I would like to talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is an online learning platform. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational to advanced math, AI, data science, and more with new lessons added every month. It's super easy to get started. You just choose what you're interested in and then your math comfort level and Brilliant is gonna suggest courses and lessons for you. I loved going to uni in school. I loved learning new things. I didn't like the homework part and the exams and assessments part, but I loved challenging myself. I loved learning new concepts and understanding new concepts. It really brings out my ambition and my competitiveness. And ultimately, it's not just about learning as many things as you can. It's more about the way that learning makes you feel. It makes me feel accomplished, especially if I get the questions right. What I really like about Brilliant is that it offers you bite-sized lessons so you can master a whole topic in as little as 15 minutes a day. So it's really perfect if you don't have a whole lot of time on your hand. Uh, you can just open Brilliant on your computer, phone or laptop. To me, mental exercise is as important as physical workouts. And I'm a visual learner, so I really appreciate the effort Brilliant has put into visualizing these concepts and visualizing the lessons. So it's a great way for me to understand and learn some topics, refresh my knowledge from school that I've fully forgotten about, and just really feed my brain's desire to learn new things. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free, for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash sydneyplantguy or just click on the link in my description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So, happy learning. Now, back to the video. Since I moved into this new apartment, I have this obsession with like smaller plants um, because I just don't have that much room for moss pots anymore. Um, so I wanna try a few new things. Maybe try 
a few trailing plants. Um, I'm also helping a friend redo his gym or like plantify his gym a little bit and he has predominantly room for trailing plants. So I just want to grow a few nice pots of trailers. So um, yeah, if any of my friends ask me to help them to plant up their space, um, hell yeah, I'm here for that. I love enabling people to, to get into this hobby or to start appreciating plants. All right, let's have a look at this. So I open up the Grow Vertical and you can see how many roots there are uh, on the back of here, right? I'm gonna remove them off so it's more obvious how much roots there are. But that's what I love the moss pole. The moss pole is really encouraging all of this root growth, which enables me to then chop in between every node and every single cutting is already propagated because it already grew roots into the moss pole. If I would have let that grow up a like a plank, like a wooden plank or up like a bamboo stick or something like that. No node apart from the bottom one that's potted up in the pot would have any roots, which means if I start cutting in between every node, first of all, they wouldn't really stick to anything. They would just fall to the ground. But second of all, they wouldn't really have a root system to now keep growing. But because they're all grown in the moss pole already and the moss pole is a growing medium, I don't have to worry about this. I'm going vertical. They're a local company over here and these Grow Vertical come in multiple different sizes. I like to use, I think this one is called the Pro um, and I love to use this mint sage green um, plastic backing because it's made from recycled plastic um, and I also appreciate the color the most. They also come in see-through and black. See-through is great because you can spy on the roots but the roots themselves prefer darkness so um, it's probably not ideal for root health. The black is great because it provides that darkness for the roots that they appreciate, but um, you can't see really the root health or you can't assess the root health uh, with the black backing. So I just go for the eco, eco green one. It's, you can't really see the root health either, but I like that it's made from recycled plastic and I just like the look of it the most. I'm not really a fan of having a lot of plastic poles all throughout my apartment. I think it looks a little bit hideous, but I found a solution. And I mean, you're looking at it right behind me. That's my new grow vertical, wall of grow verticals. Let me put it that way. And um, yeah, over there, you can't really see the plastic because the pl plastic is uh, facing the fence. But the plastic enables the moss to just stay moist for so much longer. Like it's so much less work keeping these moss poles moist because um, the plastic is just keeping all the moisture in there. Specifically outdoors, I mean, I've only really been growing things outdoors for like a week or two now. Um, definitely because of airflow. I mean, you can see how windy it is out here. With airflow, it makes the moss dry out harsher temperatures out here uh, sometimes less humidity or at least more fluctuations and even when it rains the moss pole like if it rains straight down the surface area of the moss pole that is exposed to the rain is very small it's just a little top bit so the rain in itself is not really enough to keep it moist unless it rains from the side so there's, these grow vertical poles are such a time saver when you're growing things outside. Same goes for inside, but indoors, you usually don't have that much airflow. You usually don't have the moss dry out that quickly. So indoors, I actually like my open moss poles as well because they provide plenty of aeration for the roots and roots love air uh, or like love oxygen. Whereas um, I have noticed, I've actually, I've never really, I haven't had fungus nets in like two years. And then as soon as I started using a few grow vertical moss poles, I started seeing a few fungus nets, nothing to be concerned about. So yeah, my watering routine is obviously tuned into open moss poles. So I probably just, it's, it's, it's definitely me. I'm not saying that these grow vertical moss poles will always attract fungus nets. I'm just saying, they stay moist for longer, so you might have to um, adjust your watering schedule, which is probably what most people want to do. They want to water less often, but I'm so used to watering my other moss poles more frequently that it, it's a new learning for me. But it's good. Anyway, 
I definitely waited way too long to take this apart. There's so many roots in there and that is the worst thing about using moss in your poles is that it's just so hard to separate the moss from the roots. Uh, you could use coca chips or aeroid mix or anything really. As long as it's a growing medium, the roots will grow into it. Right? Um, now the thing is I'm kind of ripping this apart and I'm ripping a lot of roots out of it and I'm making a crazy mess but I'm outside. Um, so it doesn't really matter but if you are really worried about ripping a root or so moss is really annoying. So anyway, yeah I really like this setup behind me um, because it's super easy. I can just hose it down as well and um, it just drains straight through. It's not sitting in any pot, so I don't need to worry about any water accumulated, accumulating in the planter. It has great aeration. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to see how this wall behind me evolves. It doesn't get any direct sun, so I'm not worried about them burning, but I am worried about them potentially throwing a bit of a hissy fit when it comes to winter. Realistically, I do not have space for all of these plants indoors, so if they don't survive out here, then they're not my plan to grow anymore. Um, I'm actually really liking the indoors being less cluttered at the moment and just having less plants in there, but the plants that I have chosen to stay inside are more statement pieces. So I really like it. In general, you guys know I love change. Um, I just love switching things up. So um, it's nice. I mean, I was a bit stressed out about the actual move in itself and like having such short notice. Uh, on having to vacate the old place. So obviously it was more stressful than enjoyable to me, but if I would have had unlimited time to find a new place, I would have actually really liked this process. I like like organizing my life and changing and like arranging and so on. That's like a big part of the hobby to me. All right, I'll shut up and just continue doing this and I'll speak to you when I've made a bit of progress on this, but it could take me a while. Woohoo! First one. So obviously this is like the the mother plant. There's two in here. Um, happy days. All right, and now we're moving on to all of the cuttings. Now with this plant, the most annoying thing is that it's throwing roots up and down the moss pile. So it's like super hard to figure out where the roots go and like what to do with all of them. We another one. That's yeah, a decent cutting, and I mean, look at that. That's what I mean with it's already propagated. It already has secondary roots. Beautiful. I have no idea if this video is gonna be okay. It's so windy out here. It actually makes me really nervous. I don't know how you feel about wind. I think wind is my least favorite element of climate. I get real like I like a good breeze. I love a good airflow. But if it's like windy, I just get really nervous. I just feel like things are about to fall on my head. I feel like all my plants are about to fall over. Like, I don't know. I really hate wind. Another one, also really good roots. It makes me really uneasy. Like, I can't really relax when it's super windy. Uh, at my old place as well, I had the worst windows. And when it's super windy, the windows would be rattling. So I would get like really edgy about it. Um, over here I have great windows. When you close them you hear nothing. So it's kind of like I don't even know that it's windy until I go outside. But I mean you've seen the mess that I'm making over here. Isn't it great that I can just do this outside? Oh to add to it it's starting to rain. That's okay. At least I don't need to water my garden today. Nature's gonna do that for me. I feel like every single node has grown a root up into this top bit over here and it's very... I just need to kind of rip it apart. If I rip a root or two in the process... YOLO, you've seen it. Still every cutting that I've taken out so far came out with a decent root system. Obviously not ideal, but as I said, I left it too long. Or if you're worried about that, then I would recommend to use cocoa chips or aeroid mix instead of moss. But I have a much easier time watering moss. And realistically, I water the plant weekly, sometimes more often than just weekly. But I only take the plant apart 
once. So to me, the weekly benefit that comes with watering moss outweighs the annoyingness of having to fiddle the moss out of here. It's actually quite therapeutic if it wasn't so windy out here. All right, let's have a look at this. All right, didn't see all of this root system that was within the moss pile. And I mean, I accidentally ripped a few of them. But that is what basically helped every single node already grow a new shoot. Uh, and another one. And another one. And two more. And another one. And another one. And another one. And another one. There you go. And I managed to keep the grow vertical completely intact so I could just reuse it. Well, I will reuse it, just not right now because I already made one. And yes, I will also reuse this moss. I'll probably give it a good rinse because it probably has a lot of mineral buildup um, over the years. But yeah, I, I'll, I'll totally reuse this moss. Why not? All right, so let's take a bit of inventory. We've got one with a new shoot. This one is a top cutting. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is another big top cutting. 12, 13. Okay, now with the top cuttings, I purposely didn't cut them into single node cuttings. By the time I cut them, it would have been probably, this would be the top node. And you see, it doesn't have that much of a root system yet. So the top cutting, I usually leave two or three nodes on there when I do this chopping so that um, it can continue to grow. But you can see that it has definitely gone a little bit smaller in size. So this was the last leaf before I cut it. And then this would have been the first leaf after I cut it. Loving the pattern, by the way. Uh, it will fade to all dark in a, uh, soon. Uh, you can see it's getting smaller because obviously it used to have the entire root system below it to also support it, but now it only relies on this after the chop, which is totally fine. Um, what I'll do with this probably is I will actually have to cut this leaf off because I'll pop that in a pot all the way down and make it its own little plant. And then for my moss pole, I want to use single node cuttings. I want to use these ones with a new shoot so the new shoot can attach itself to the moss pole straight away. So I'll choose some of those. The reason I don't put this on the moss pole again, if I will put this on the moss pole now, it would all be halfway up its moss pole without really having been able to take advantage of it. So to me, that is a waste of moss pole because then you'll see me do this exact process in another three, four months again. So I'd rather have it start at the very base of the moss pile so it can take full advantage of the moss pile. And that will then most likely give me the results that I'm after uh, by the time the plant has reached the top of its moss pile. Alrighty, so we've got plenty of those. So let me choose the ones. These are kind of smallish, smallish. I'm gonna choose the ones with the biggest stems because the bigger the stem, the more likely the new growth will also be quite large. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. I reckon that's plenty. Okay. Okay. Okay, now I'm taking all of these roots and I'm fiddling into the pod. Oh, like this. And now I'm just topping it up with air white mix. There you go, that's much better. And now I can take the wires off or I can keep them. I'm just gonna keep them for now. Another one. Nope. There you go. They might look a little weird right now, but ultimately 
it's just because the leaves are pointing in all sorts of directions but they'll settle in the leaves will start pointing towards the light but overall I managed to make 13 plants out of two by just taking one quick cut while it's still attached to the moss pile the easiest way for you to propagate any plant I've done this many many times with many other plants I don't always do them into single note cuttings it's basically a chop and extend but really optimized for every single node rather you know my normal chop and extend I just take whole segments of the pole the principle is the same I'm basically propagating every single node while it's still attached to the moss pole as it grows up every single node grows roots into the moss pole which is basically air layering every single node so that my plant is ready for propagation at any time alrighty it is definitely getting way too windy out here I'm feeling a little bit Anxious is the wrong word, but a little bit like, I don't know, it's not super nice out here today, but I really wanted to get on top of that. It's been way overdue. I just had to put it off because of the move so that I can just move one pole instead of moving four. <laughs> but we still need to fix this one back onto the wall. So I'm gonna give this a piece of wire. Here we go and hang it back on here and we're done thank you so much for watching i hope you found this informative uh, like subscribe leave a nice comment and i'll see you in my next video bye